page notes. <laughs> Just I want to tell me how how, you, how we got here. I'm from a California guy, and but my wife was from Michigan, and ten years ago. We went over to Elk Lake because that's where she went to camp every year for many years as a youth. Mm -hmm. Make a long story short, we ended up buying a piece of property on Elk Lake. And we were coming back and forth from California in the summer and after my son right here, his sixth grade, he goes, let's live here. <laughs> okay, we will try that. And he went to junior high, middle school, his seventh and eighth grade there. And we said, that's tough, winters are tough, went back to California. <laughs> but while we were there, the second year I was there, I was diagnosed with cancer. And my cancer spread, and, um, and I've been dealing with it for six years. In fact, I'm doing chemotherapy now, and if you remember me speaking or being here last winter, I had lots of hair, and so it's coming out. Now, the good news is, being bald is fashionable now. <laughs> you know, it's no big deal. The old days, people would shave their head to, you know, be solidarity. There's no need for that anymore because everyone's just shaving their head. <laughs> and half pack half you guys who thought I shaved my head. So um, then, when you um, have something bad like that, I, I was, you know, I didn't know what my prognosis would be, and and I, I was given a short time by my doctor if things didn't work, and I, you know, I went to the extreme of buying a video camera to film myself and my kids, but never turned it on. Isn't that great? So, um, when these things happen to you, it kind of starts putting life into perspective for you. And I immediately, that same year, read two pieces of, of passage or message that actually changed my life, and the first one is, the newly diagnosed cancer patient asked God, how much time do I have left? And God replied, enough to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us here, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, or a week, but there's enough time left in your life to make a difference. The second one, my dad used to keep this saying on his mirror, and it was, it's called Attitude, and it's by Charles Schwindel. I don't, I want to go quick, I don't want to read this whole thing, but... You know, attitude is something you're in charge of. You're not, you can't help what happens to you. You can't help what someone says about you. You can't help things that go on in your life, but the only thing you are in control of is your attitude. And an attitude can make a business, can make a church, can make a community. And in that attitude is what will get you through life. And those two things I took to heart, and I think they really saved me. Um, my mother-in-law called me two days ago, and she's, she's at the point where she needs to go into nursing care or house, and she's, everyone's telling her how bad it is, and she's got, and it's like, wait a minute, if you're going in thinking bad things, it's going to be bad, but, you know, go in with a good attitude, and, you know, you'll, it, it'll come true, just, just knock it off. So I gave her my attitude talk. <laughs> so um, we did end up moving to Rochester, Michigan, and another thing God put in my life is this thing called the Band of Brothers. I went, I still play a little basketball, and there's a gym down there, which is a public gym, and we're playing, and I met some guys, and Dave Halsey here invited me to do a Bible study with him, and this was four years ago. And these guys, we become like brothers, and I have three of the guys here with me today, and, and we, when, when the cancer came, and the band of brothers, what we do is we prioritize our life. And I like to, and I prioritize them by the F word. I, I'm not an F bomb guy. I'm going to just say the first is faith. <laughs> faith. Faith is number one. Okay, and, and by having, and when you have brothers that have the same common faith, it means a lot. And I want, I'm going to say this about faith faith is a choice. You know, God gave us free will to choose what we want to choose. And I choose in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, I, look, I read that um, the number one theory of, or the number one belief of atheists is, is the Big Bang theory. theory. The Big Bang theory. Guess what? That's a theory, right? Big Bang theory. That no, there's nothing in the world but matter, and all of a sudden there's a big explosion. Everything flew out, 
and, and Earth was one of many, many things that formed and formed this perfect little circle with Earth and water and life. And guess what? Atheists can believe that. But again, it's a theory. That, they have faith in that. How, and you know, who says God didn't do the Big Bang, if that's true? And how can you put faith in, in a theory more than in a God? And I just want to just think about that. I mean, it, that is a theory. It's not, it's, it, it, it's not a proven fact thing. And if it is, I still believe it's a God thing. Second of my big F words is family. You know, after faith, family is most important to me. And when life gets difficult, you realize how important family is. And, and as a father and as a man or a woman, you, you want to leave, you leave a, a legacy. You want to set an example. And family becomes, oh, so important. And as the Band of Brothers, we support each other, our families. The third, um, my big F word, is friendship. Faith, family, friendship. Now, friendship is people you know that have a kind of a common ground. You like hanging out with them. And to me, the best day in my life right now is to have a deck dinner over at Elk Lake with my friends and family. I mean, that's more important than travel and all these other things. Because when life starts maybe getting shorter, those things become more important. And now just below that friendship is fellowship. Another F word. So fellowship is taking this friendship to a deeper level. And, and I've learned to do that with my band of brothers. And you mentioned your men's group. And you, know, you guys came to our house last winter. A really great way to build deeper friendships and fellowships. If you're sitting around with a group of people, you know, and you're there for this purpose, give each person five minutes to talk. Go around the room. Talk about anything. Talk about your kids, your life. Because the A-type personalities will dominate any meeting, and the B-types won't say a word. You know, 80, the A-types talk 80%, and the B-types listen 80%. And we need those listeners. So if you give every person just five minutes, no more, and then by the time you go around, you're learning things. You, ne you may have known this person 10 years, but then someone will say something that, oh, I wish I had said that. So then go around one more time for two minutes. And I'll tell you, you do that a couple times, and you're going to start digging into God. You're going to start digging into things that are going on. You're going to pray for each other, and it's just an amazing way to build that fellowship. Okay, now, um, I want to talk about joy. Joy, you know, it's, what is joy? It's pleasure. It's happiness. It's a deep contentment. And one thing that really brings joy is generosity. Generosity is the word after F, so I can't throw it in my F word. But when you're generous, it brings joy. And this is a, it's actually a chemical proven by scientists. And I challenge you to go Google this when I'm done. But you've heard of endorphins. Endorphin is a pain mask. When, people, when marathon runners hit the wall, they're, 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 they're hurting. And your brain releases a hormone, and endorphin is a hormone, and it's a pain mass. It masks pain. It's a real thing, and that's when people go through the wall, is, is this hormone release. When you do something generous, it's also proven, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to go look this up. Um, what's released is another hormone. There's four hormones your brain has. It's, it's oxytocin, not oxycotton, but oxytocin, <laughs> oxytocin. And it gets released, and it brings joy. And they, they've done studies on this, and I didn't know this. I actually borrowed from a U of M graduation speech here. But it brings about two hours of joy to you. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir right now because one thing that this church has taught the Band of Brothers and why we're so drawn here is this is one generous church. You guys have Ann doing the clothing here. You open your church up in the afternoon for the kids. You are, what you're doing with foster children is just amazing. I mean, this is a small church, and I know you're not just, money's falling out of you, but you guys are so generous. And we do these generous things because it brings joy. And, and I didn't realize this, but besides giving joy and doing, being generous, which we all should do, you have to be able to accept it. You have to be able to accept generosity. I was given this, Dave and I went go to a place downstate called Grace Centers of Hope, and it's a rehab center. It's a gigantic throughout Detroit. And they have men, women, and women and children. And you can go there if you don't have a home. Or a lot of these guys are 
drug addicts. And we were talking, I was talking pretty much what I'm saying now. And one of the guys afterwards, I stayed with him and talked to him for 45 minutes. He's a heroin addict and he's probably 35. And his, every time he gets out, he uses again. And he said, when he got dropped off last, his dad told him he was a hopeless cause. And his mom told him if he ever gets out again, she don't, he's just going to use again. He says, said to me, you know, I can't accept generosity. I just can't. I'm so, I've hurt so many people. I feel bad to accept generosity. And I said, and the reason is, is, is guilt. And so we prayed about, you know, Jesus died for your, for, for your sin and your guilt. And that he would overcome this feeling of guilt and, and and be able to accept generosity, accept people helping him, and he too will be generous. And so I, I, I'm looking forward to going back and seeing him again, see how he's doing. I, I can't get, they won't let us, he's new, so they won't let us have a cell phone, I can't catch up on him. So another, I want to tell another story about generosity that brings joy. I'm undergoing chemotherapy now, dust the hair. About three, four weeks ago, and I get my treatment at University of Michigan. And I, I think it was my second treatment. My hair was just starting to fall out. And there was a lady at a desk at a booth. And she had hand-knitted all these uh, skull caps for the chemo patients. And I went up to her and I, I said, oh, man, that'd be great. And we talked. And, but all the hats were female type hats. They were real feminine. They were all pink. They had flowers. And, oh, geez. And I, I, so I said to her, I said, ah, can you, do you have anything masculine? She goes, no, but I'll make you one. I said, really? She goes, yeah, I'll make you one. I said, okay. I said, she said, when are you going to come back? I said, I'll be back in three weeks for my next treatment. Okay, great. So three weeks go by. Now I've shaved my head off because it was all coming out. And I, I, I get in there, and she's not there, okay? I go up and see the doctor, do my blood work, and before I get locked in, I go back down, and she's there. And I'm just well, wondering if she'll remember. A, will she? A, did she make my hat? B, will she remember me? I'm bald now. And I, and I, and she had written my name. So I start walking to her. She looks at me. She goes, Steve, I'm so glad you came. So she sat there, and she she gave me this. So, so I asked her. I said, you know, we hugged, and I just thanked her, and I said, why do you do this? And what did she say? It brings me joy. And, and I was the guy who accepted the generosity with open heart. She gave me this hat with generosity. And, you know, that's, that's, and it brings joy to both parties. So I know this is a generous church. And keep doing those things. And accept generosity, too. Don't be afraid of that. It's very important. Um, yeah, we, we work at another school of, in downtown Detroit, Lions Academy, and oh my gosh, every time we go down there, and do we, you know, we're quote doing something for the boys. No way. I'm now learning, it's that joy buzz. You know that this endorphin. Actually, it has words. It's called helpers high, that hormone. It's also called the good feel good hormone and joy buzz. These are real words that are out there in the <laughs> medical community. So when we do these things, we, we, we're like, we're doing it for the boys. Well, I think we're doing it for ourselves because we get that two-hour high. <laughs> um, so, so I'm going to wrap this up because as going forth, I just want to say, you know, there's enough time to make a difference. Um, no matter what circumstances you have, make a difference with a great attitude. Think of those F words. What's important in your life? What, what, what are your priorities? Mine are faith, family, friendship, fellowship. And then there's another F word, fun. Go out and have fun. Be generous. Receive joy. Bring joy to yourself and others. In God's name. Amen.